going on, everybody? Cigar Titan here once again. My good friend, Brother Stoney. Say hello to the people. Yo, welcome back, Cigar Fam. And today we have a very special episode for you. We got out of the house. We are out and about. Brother Stoney, you want to tell them where we're at? You know what? We are by ourselves. We figured we'd come out to this undisclosed location to shoot this special video for you. Today we got... What can you tell us about? Hey, man, we got stogies. We got firearms today. We got our windows down, driving down the 405, sing along to the radio, mm -mm. we're gonna make it someday, nothing's gonna get in our way, we will be the biggest band in town, mm -mm. round and round the world we'll go, putting on the greatest show, so make sure that you don't miss out, just be there. We're taking our shot, bring what you got We're going all the way to the top We will hear the sound of one million people Screaming our names when we're backstage We'll play loud, surfing the crowd Everybody's jumping around Yeah, that's the place where I wanna be Going on stage headline on a Saturday night Oh, 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 oh. Saturday night Hey guys, welcome back. So as you can see, uh, we are officially back in the Stogie Den here. We spent the day out in the desert shooting off some weapons and having a little fun. What you think, brother Stogie? Um, wait, are we missing somebody? No, I don't think so. I, well, it's an empty chair. Oh, there is. Our table is supposed there. to be here, so I think someone is supposed to be here. I wonder who that could be. Let's bring him in. Live from the Stogie <laughs> Den, baby. <laughs> welcome. Our boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that ever so energetic introduction. Right? Come on, man. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so, though, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, this is my brother. We've talked about uh, him in past videos. Uh, I think it was video number two, wasn't it, from the story, where we talked about, we did the Dutch Masters. Ah, uh, yep. And talked about uh, our first birthday. Oh, so many cigars. years ago. Yeah. So many years ago. So this is also my brother, and we got like a Bubba Ray and D-Bon Dudley type thing <laughs> going on for all my <laughs> WWE fans, WWF fans out there. So, yeah, family function today. So what are we talking about today? I mean, pretty much, hey, we got out of the house. We went somewhere desolate where no one could find us, and we just had fun. We got sick of being in the house, um, needed a break from a stogie day real quick, so we figured we bring the outside inside to you guys. So as you can see from the beginning of the video, we were out in the middle of the desert, and we took quite a bit of firearms with us and had some cigars and did a little shooting while we were out there. Brother Stogie, what'd you bring today? Well, what I brought out there today, brought a plethora of, of, of things out there, but actually I wanted to showcase my AR-15, but that kind of, that wasn't the star of my day-to-day. -day. The star of my day-to-day -day was, uh, this bad boy right here. So this is a pointer, over-under shotgun, 12 gauge, brake action. And for those who don't know what brake action is, it means it breaks in half when you load it. And also, when you're done shooting, oh, hold on, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was, it was supposed to snap back, but it was a little heavy. It's been a long day today, you know what I'm saying? So, it brings it back together when we're finished. This is a 12 gauge shotgun, over or under. And um, I've, I use this for bird hunting. I use it for sport clay shooting. I love clay shooting. And I kind of just like my baby. Oh, special thing about this shotgun, check this out though. So, the wife and I, when we got married, we did a like a our ceremonial united arms thing and we shot off our shotguns. Well, that's not entirely true. Did you shoot off your shotgun? Well what happened was <laughs> you know, my ship misfired the first shot. 
<laughs> but I got the second shot off, all right? So, man, what kind of shit, you know, if I'm away from camera? Who fixed it for you? You know what I'm saying? Shit. Who fixed that gun for you? I don't know who the hell fixed it. I you. think Bar- it was the wife. <laughs> it's okay. My wife knows what she's doing. She, 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 she loves shotguns. She loves big, long rifles. <laughs> That often misfire. <laughs> hey, you know? Why are you misfiring too much? You got three kids. I, I got three kids. Right. You, three kids. you know what I'm saying? Shoot, aim, fire. You know what I'm saying? That's the, the most romantic story I've ever heard. Right? Fucking shit. Have yeah, mercy. <laughs> yes, this is, you know, I have, you know, an arsenal. I won't say an arsenal, but I have a variety of firearms in my house that are, you know, completely safe and locked up in my, you know, California safe combination lock. Uh, the AR-15, I was able to get maybe about 80 NATO rounds of 5.56 off, and it was a blast. So we shot, you name it, fire extinguishers that were already shot up. <laughs> we, we weren't doing it ourselves. Cans, bottles, you name it. We were out there. How about, how about you? What'd you bring? I wound up bringing a plethora of weapons, actually, brother. Still, you got a plethora of weapons, too. I did. What I brought out was my most expensive piece that I wound up buying about two years ago, and this is my pride and joy. This is the Winchester 1873 45 Long Colt Lever Action Repeater Rifle. This is the gun that is affectionately known as the gun that won the Wild West. It is said that a Native American would have given his soul to own one of these in order to fight off any number of cavalry members. The best part about this is, you mind holding that for me? Thank you, sir. This is an actual Winchester. This is not a reproduction. This thing cost me about 1500 bucks, straight up. And they don't produce them in the United States. They're not like Henry Lever Action that are produced in Bayonne, New Jersey. This has actually been built in Japan and it actually has the craftsman's name etched right on the barrel, but it is an actual Winchester. This thing, I took it apart when I first bought it and I slicked it the hell up. This thing, Chambers and cycles. Beautiful sound, baby. <laughs> Butter smooth. I mean, this thing is super accurate. I mean, you've shot in it. I have. And uh, yeah, what do you think? I love it. Uh, it's super accurate. It's very easy to handle. The fact that you took the time to actually go in there and lube up the handle and everything so that when you're pulling that crank on there, it's it's not rubbing against your knuckles all hard and everything yeah. else. It's, it's real smooth. It's a beautiful piece of weapon. I will say this, with the walnut stock and the foregrip, and the case hardened bluing, this thing is, is straight out of a page turner of an old Wild West novel. I mean, this thing is a beautiful piece of weapon. Go ahead and safe this for you all so you know it is empty, but one click back, this hammer, it will not fire. So this thing is good to go right now. But put a few rounds through this bad boy today as well. Shot up a, like a fire extinguisher of one that's already been damaged. A couple of bottles, and yeah, this thing is uh, good to go. Not only that, but this is a part of my classic collection. Another piece from my classic collection that I wound up bringing out. So my new cigar fam, he does, you know, side hobby jobs of narrating documentaries from <laughs> Geographic. <laughs> so if you ever see the most latest, 2013 to 2020, he's narrating those documentaries. <laughs> This is actually a Cimarron Pistolero. Now this is modeled after the 1873. It is a single action. It is in fact unloaded. One, two clicks back. You can go ahead and open up the gate and spin it. And there's absolutely nothing in there. I can go ahead and point it at you. It is safe, it is clear. Uh, I want to do an actually a little bit of customization work like he mentioned. Uh, I like to dabble in a couple of things here when it comes to woodworking. And I want up taking an old ring that I got from Glasgow, Scotland. An old silver ring, it's one of those uh, you know, uh, the heart and the hand and the crown, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it means that if you wear it facing out, you're looking for love. You wear it with the crown facing in, you have found love. Um, I actually put it in the inlaid in the handle. This is a walnut hand grip as well. So I wanted to kind of doing a little modification, taking care of that. You know, it's, it's a great shot. It is also the same ammunition, the 45 Long Colt, so it shoots the same ammo as the Winchester. And I did that specifically for a reason. That way when I'm carrying the sidearm as such, and that, I only have to buy one box of ammunition. I'm good to go for those. So this is actually a very fun weapon to shoot. Did you get a, you, you did shoot this today, didn't you? I did shoot that, yep. You did. How, how, how'd you think? Well, what'd you think of it? I look very smooth. The kick, the kickback, there's no when you shoot revolvers as such, um, especially, you know, hammers. You get that, that kick all the way back. Now, didn't get too much kickback on this one, so I, I loved it. And you fired this weapon as well, what do I'm, you think? I think the biggest surprise was, so the first time I actually shot this weapon was, <laughs> so the first time I actually shot this we- uh, weapon was when we went to the range, uh, I want to say a couple years ago now, 
And I was actually surprised at just how accurate this thing was for a revolver. Um, dead on, you know, I, I personally have a Glock, which I'll show you in a, in a minute, but this one, shooting it at the range, I was just, I was blown away at just how, no pun intended, um, <laughs> at just how accurate the shot was with the revolver. Great gun. And, and you know, it, it's sturdy, it feels, you know, it's very hardy. Yeah, exactly. So. This is one of my favorites that you own. And you can even feel just how weighty this thing is. I mean, in those movies, when you see the, the actors, say like Kurt Russell, who was playing Wyatt Earp in Tombstone, when he pulls that guy's gun out of his own belt and he billy clubs the hell out of his head and he knocks him down, you could feel how this would do some damage to someone's skull. So if you run out of ammo, just throw it at someone and you will fuck them up. <laughs> AKA 2020 pistol whip. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> basically. So um, this is a uh, part of my uh, my old West collection. My, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like the black tactical, you know, kind of reconnaissance, you know, weaponry and whatnot of the modern day era. That's fun and everything, but there's nothing quite like the sound of, you just hear that cock back. That's, that's just that's just nice. I, I enjoy that. And, and just the, the craftsmanship and the detail on, on his firearms that he has. I mean, this is the old western. You know, you're big fans of Tombstone, Wyatt Earp, Doc, Mark, Clint Mark, Eastwood, Mark, and Holiday. You know, <laughs> there's, there's, there's just there's just something about those type of firearms that just I don't know, just reinvents the whole. Not really events, but just brings back the manhood and firearm whiskey. <laughs> Right beer, <laughs> motherfucking cigars. Yeah. Now, the last weapon I wanted to bring in, it was a part of my old West collection, so to speak, was my 16 gauge double barrel shotgun. Now, this one was actually constructed in 1919. It was my great grandfather's, handed down to my grandfather, to my father, to me. This is a 16 gauge, not very common out in the West, but in the Midwest, so to speak, a lot of bird hunting happens out there. This never really took off in the Wild West. 12 gauge, absolutely. 16 gauge, not so much. But this thing will fire and run all damn day long. But birdshot mostly. Like an idiot, we wound up taking off to go our undisclosed location out in the middle of the desert, and I left the ammunition for this in the bag back here. So I didn't even get a chance to, I know, I just, I... Made me wake up early for no I reason know. to go out here and then forgot to shit at all. Exactly. But it is, a, uh, it is a Steven Savage Arms shotgun, and it is a same brake model as well as Brother Stogie's, it will break for breech loading and eject the shells and then bam. Ooh, another beautiful sound. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. You can call this the farmer's daughter shotgun protector, so to speak. <laughs> Get away from my daughter. Gotta protect her virtue. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> but yeah, this one actually doesn't actually have a hard kick. And this one's sitting at about a 26 inch barrel length original and 16 gauge, so it doesn't really have a tremendous amount of kick. I mean, it's, it's once again, dead balls accurate. This thing will run all damn day too, so, but mostly birdshot, but that's about it. That was it that I brought out for my Wild West collection, and the last one that I brought out that I wound up firing kind of at the last minute just because I hadn't run any ammunition through it for the rest of the day, I wanted to go ahead and bring out what it is that I normally side carry. Now, I'm from Arizona, so don't worry, I'm not breaking any laws. Um, this one is actually clear as well. But this is my Ruger LC9S. This is my side carry. This is only a 9mm, okay? Uh, but this is my everyday side protection carry for concealed or open carry because Arizona's are just cool like that. <laughs> right, sorry, we don't whatever. care. Uh, but yeah, this one I just put around maybe seven rounds through it today. It was very, very minimal and I just wanted to go ahead and empty out some standard carry hollow points that I usually carrying this and that's about a maybe 125 grain rounds is what I carry through this so but yeah that's it for what I want to bring in but once again this is a black tactical not a part of my wild west collection so to speak but this one is a beautiful you can tell there's a lot of marring on the, on this gun I, I use it all the time uh, this is the one I train with and practice with at least twice a month um, it is not a pretty gun anymore because, you know, they, like I said, if I can get a close-up there, maybe you can see that. Maybe not. You can't see that. No, you gotta get closer. I'll get closer. Here we go. There, there go ahead and move you, up. There on you it. go. But you can tell just by looking at the very end of this thing, it is, yeah, the bluing has rubbed off in certain areas. But it is a fun gun. It is very easily concealable. For the protection, and 9mm will do the trick in a pinch when need be. 
so that's what I brought. So to continue on, the, the black tactical and home defense, concealed carry, open carry, we're gonna take it over to our man cigar type over here with his <laughs> black safety tactical. So my, my, my disclaimer here <laughs> is I am by no means the gun expert here in this group right now. Um, well, actually, I'm not going to tell you how many guns I own, uh, but I am not, <laughs> I'm not the gun expert, we'll say that. Uh, so the most common thing that I carry and I shoot with is actually just my, my Glock 45. ACP. I've had this now for probably about you know, five or six years, um, and this is a very sturdy, very heavy, very common uh, firearm for you know people who are looking to buy their first gun. It's usually you know a Glock or something like that. Uh, really great when you take it out to the range. They're you know fairly reliable for the most part. Glocks do have a tendency to uh, misfire. Every now and then, you know, a bullet get caught in the chamber there, but uh, for the most part, keep it clean. Keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm not the gun keep, expert keep here. Well, that can happen with group. almost any firearm except revolvers. You don't get really much jams. You will have a misfire only because it's a bad round nine times out of ten with a revolver. But what he's talking about is uh, stove piping when say a, a round will not eject all the way and the slide comes forward and pinches it, and you'll have the round sticking up out of the slide. Very similar to what the cigar is doing in my hand if this was the slide itself. Then you just have to, you know, pull the slide back, eject that round, and another one will get put right back up into the chamber. Which, which can be a cause of, you know, many different technicalities that could happen, you know what I'm saying? So the whole, you know, not wow, wow, West, but uh, wow, well, wow, wow, hood, yeah? <laughs> wow, wow, hood, wow, wow, hood, you know what I'm saying? Trick shot, that, that would cause that. Uh, proper hand placement, that would cause that as well. So. Like I said, <clears throat> many reasons for that. I mean, so so real quick, what are we what are we smoking on? Well, today I am having a 1968 Padilla. Uh, this was a recent order I just placed uh, online. Got a shipment of these cigars in. Looked like a pretty good deal. It's actually not a bad smoke. I'm smoking an 1873 from Cigar Titans Humidor, which because everything has been closed down to the COVID-19. I am unable to get to the Calibra Cigar Lounge, or club, I should say, in order to make a couple purchases of sticks on my own. And so after a long day, we had, what, lunch, dinner? Mm -hmm. Something like that already, so I went and grabbed my dessert stick from front of my travel humidor, and this is a Cafe Nub Cigar. All right, Cigar fam, so I hope you enjoyed the B-roll footage that we provided for you. I mean, today was just a, a, a lovely day. You know, it's the second day yesterday. We came in as, as a mini family, you know, there's no more, no gatherers, you know, higher than 10. So, <laughs> came together, we had some steaks and potatoes and asparagus yesterday, and today we did stogies and guns for our, all of our subscribers and viewers out there. How'd you enjoy your weekend? Weekend was awesome. Weekend was awesome. I was, I was very happy that you know, you and your girl got the chance to come down and spend some time with us this weekend. Um, and getting up into the desert today, I was pleasantly surprised. I was really anticipating it to be very overcast, cloudy, rainy, and we got up there today. It was clear skies and Beautiful. sun, and I've got the sunburn on the back of my neck to prove it. Yeah, so red. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No I burn easy. Me. I burn easy. No sunburn. For Get me. out of town. <laughs> no sunburn. <laughs> oh, got that melanin, baby. <laughs> got that melanin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as we enjoy shooting it for you. If you are new to our channel, go and hit that subscribe button. Do us a favor, hit that bell so you can get a new notification every time we throw up a new video. And until next time, live how you smoke. Smoke how you live, and that's smooth, baby. Take care, everybody. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>